Hi guys, this is Misty Regum, and today we're going to learn how to graph sine and cosine functions with the horizontal shift. Right or left, that's the whole idea. Let's go. So first graph we're going to do is y equals 4 sine of 2x minus 2 pi over 3. First thing that I need to do is I need to bring my general equation for my sine function, where a is my amplitude, a is going to be equal to 4, b in this case is 2, which is my frequency. Uh, C is negative 2 pi over 3, and D is nothing, because I'm only considering, remember, C is horizontal movement, and D is vertical movement. That will be our, my next video after this one. Now, once I have my amplitude, my frequency, remember, B is the frequency, I'm going to find the period of the function. And the period is the same as 2 pi over B. All right, let's make some space over here. And now... Uh, b is 2, so I have 2 pi over 2, which is going to give me pi. So this is one full period. After this, i got to find my increments. And the increments is nothing else than the period divided by 4. Okay, the period is pi, so it's going to divide by 4. Once I have this, now remember today's difference is from previous video, which is this one, is going to be that I am moving horizontally. So now, whatever is on the x, I'm sorry, whatever is on the parenthesis is going to be my horizontal movement. Okay? So this is called phase shift. Okay? So my phase shift, right or left, is going to be whatever is inside the parenthesis. So I'll bring that to x minus 2 pi over 3, and I make it equal to 0. Because the whole idea is to find the value of x. From there, let's solve for x. 2 pi over 3 divided by I'm sorry, added to both sides, I cancel, and I have 2x equals 2 pi over 3. Last step, divided by 2, divided by 2, I make this a fraction, so x, let me see, 2 pi times 1 is 2 pi, and the middle values are 3 times 2 is 6, and that's going to end up in pi over 3. Now, once I have... Uh, the phase shift, which is pi over 3, let me get this information uh, around the graph. Let's go. My increment is pi over 4, and the phase shift is pi over 3. That means my graph is going to move to the right, pi over 3, okay? And that's where I'm going to start. So let's call that this is going to be pi over 3. And then from then, the, uh, the period of function is pi. So from here to here, so let's say this 2, 4, 6, and 8. This is going to be pi, a full cycle of my graph, all right? Here I start because that's my, my phase shift. I went to the right. And from here, because this is a sign, I'm going to have my full cycle. Let's find my critical points. Now, I know that my increment is pi with 4. So let's divide this whole period into four pieces. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 pieces. 1, 2, 3, and 4 pieces, okay? Now, remember... My amplitude is 4, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and 4. And also I have to go negative 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's going to be negative 4. The five critical points for my sign that are critical, no pun intended, intended but uh, the critical points for my signs, for my sign function is x intercept. That's where I start. Now, these are my critical points. X-intercept, where I start, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept. This is where my graph starts. Remember, normally I start at 0, but it got a phase shift of pi over 3, so this point jump over here, and that's where I start. From here, which is my first point, I go to my maximum. My maximum is my amplitude. And then from there, I go back to the X-intercept, right? Maximum, X-intercept. And now I go to my minimum value, and my minimum value is my negative 4, right there. And then after that, I go back to the x-intercept, and that's my function, and that's my sine function. Smooth curve. Make sure it's a smooth curve. And that's a full cycle, where the period is equal to pi, right? Once I have that, now here comes the question. I know that this point... Is pi over 3, but I don't know how much is this, I don't know how much is this, how much is this, how much is this. I know that between here and here is pi over 4, right? Because that's my increment. And then I know where pi over 4 
and then another pi of 4 and another pi of 4, right? Those are for the increments pi over 4. But how much is the x value? So let's go. This point is the same as x, which is pi over 3, plus pi over 4. Now let's do this math on the side. So we have pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Because I'm out of fractions, I need to get the same denominator. A common denominator will be 12. So to get to 12, I got to multiply by 4, by 4, by 3, by 3. Now 4 times pi is 4 pi over 12 pi plus 3 pi. Why did I put a pi here? I'm sorry. It's 4 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12. There we go. So now each increment is pi over 4, but in terms of 12, it's going to be 3 pi over 12. All right. So I start at pi over 3. That's where I start. Pi over 3. My maximum happens plus pi over 4, which is going to give me 7 pi over 12. And that's my maximum, 7 pi over 12. And now the next, which is this value, is going to be 7, plus, 7 pi over 12 plus another increment, which is 3 pi over 12. And that's going to give me 10 pi over 12 which I can reduce divided by 2 is going to give me 5 pi over 6. All right, my next value, and that's this. My next value is going to be my minimum, right? But the x value is 10 pi over 12 plus another increment. So it's 10 pi over 12 plus another increment, which is 3 pi over 12, and it's going to give me 13 pi over 12. And that's the minimum, 13 pi over 12. And last but not least, this is for here, 13 pi over 12. And my last is this, plus 3 pi over 12, which is 13 plus 3, is going to be 16 pi over 12. So this is going to be 16 pi over 12. I reduce by 4 by 4, and it's going to give me 4 pi over 3. This for last value is 4 pi over 3. All right? And one more thing. They can ask you for the domain and the range. Domain and range. Remember, domain. What's going to happen with the domain? Your graph does, does not stop here. Remember, your graph keeps going to the right. Okay. Keeps going as a cycle to the right, and it doesn't stop. And your graph keeps going from here. It's going to go to the minimum, and it's going to go up, and it keeps going. So your graph keeps going to the right and to the left. So your graph goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity on the right, okay? Parenthesis here, parenthesis there. I'm sorry, this is a horrible infinity. It's like an eight sideways, right? Negative infinity to positive infinity. What about the range? Now for the range, it's a different story because the range, look at the amplitude, right? The highest value is gonna be four and the lowest value is supposed to be a negative four, right? A negative four. So my graph goes, at the y-axis from negative 4 to 4, and that's my range, including the negative 4, including the 4. So I'll be my domain and range for the function. That goes for the cosine as well. Okay, so let's do another example. Okay, so now let's work on this one. Now we have, instead of a sine, we have a cosine. Half a cosine, 3x plus pi over 2. Again, we need to bring the uh, general equation from here. The amplitude is 1 half. Right, my frequency is three. Um, let's bring the um, period. So my period for the function is two pi over b, which is two pi divided by three. Once I have the period, I'm gonna find my increments. Increments, and this is nothing else than finding the period divided by four. So that's going to give me 2 pi over 3 divided by 4. I'll make this a fraction, and that's going to give me 2 pi on the top. And 3 times 4 is 12, which is going to be pi over 6. And now that's each of my increments. All right, uh, let's go my phase shift. So my phase shift, or my horizontal move, I'll need to bring whatever's inside the parentheses, which is 3x plus pi over 2, and I make that equal to 0. From there, i got to find the value of x minus pi over 2. 
and that's going to give me 3x equals negative pi over 2 divided by 3 divided by 3 and my x value is going to be uh, again let's make this a fraction and that's going to give me negative pi on the top and the bottom is going to give me 6 so this is the phase shift that means my graph is going to move to the left pi over 6 and then my increments are going to be pi over 6 let's get into a graph first things first my phase shift now because it's negative I'm going to the left right this is 0 this is positive this is negative so I'm going to decide that this is going to be negative pi over 6 okay so two boxes are going to be pi over 6 so this is going to be pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 6. Why am I doing this? Because each increment is pi over 6. Now, keep in mind, this is cosine. So let me write the critical points. Now, because my graph is starting at my max, remember, the cosine starts at the maximum. Then goes to the intercept or the x-intercept, minimum, x-intercept, maximum. Those are the five critical points. My phase shift was to the left. So I'm going to start to the maximum. Maximum, maximum, right now my amplitude is one half. So let's call this one half. Okay, so this is going to be one half. Right here, I go to my maximum. Then I go to my intercept because each increment is pi over 6. From here to here is pi over 6. From here to here is pi over 6. From here to here is pi over 6. So if this is 1 pi over 6, this is going to be 2 pi over 6. And another pi over 6 is going to give me 3 pi over 6. Okay, we'll simplify that in a minute. So let's start. Uh, this is my amplitude, right? So it's negative 1 half. So I go maximum, intercept, minimum, x intercept, and my maximum. Right? This is the order. So I come from a curve, curve. And then I go back into a curve. If I want to continue this graph, it's going to go like a curve, like a cycle. So this is a full cycle. All right. Now let's find these values. My initial point was uh, the shift, which is negative pi over 6. That's my first value. My increment is pi over 6. From here to here is pi over 6. So this is going to be a 0. So my first value, OK. My next value is plus pi over 6. So that's going to be pi over 6. My next value is plus pi over 6. Remember, every single one of these is pi over 6 plus pi over 6 plus pi over 6. All right? And then I'm, I'm able to reduce this. Pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 2 pi over 6, which is going to give me pi over 3. And then plus pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 6, but I'm going to reduce this. And it's going to give me pi over 2. All right? So that's the idea. Finding the cycle. This is a full cycle. Uh, and then writing the values of x. Okay? Now let's do the domain and range. So my domain, remember, if this is my graph, I can continue my graph. So let me see. Let me do a little bit of my graph to the right. So my graph can continue x-intercept. I go minimum, I go x-intercept, I go maximum. So if I continue my graph to the right, it will go like that, okay? If I continue to the left, then it will come down here and we'll keep going, right? And I have an arrow here, arrow there. The reason I'm doing this is because your domain goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, okay? My graph keeps going to the right and to the left. My range is a different story, it's the y values. So it's going to go from negative one half, which is my amplitude on the bottom, and one half amplitude on the top. All right, so always look at the amplitude. And that will be the negative, the bottom, positive on the top. And that will be it. Okay, guys, our next graph is going to be shifting sine and cosine graphs vertically. Got you learning. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.